Om Sam Saraswati Namaha Namaste. Verse number 91, starting with verse, with name number 719. Trikonat Nila Gaditya, Panamamri Paranjita, Mahavidyeshwari Sweta, Tiruna Pudasundari, Torita Bhakti Sanyuta, Bhakti Bhashya Sanatani, Madhunanda Mahi Bhakta, Babita Bhakta Shankari, Sarva Sundar Yadilaya, Sarva Sabad Yadalini, Sarva Samoha Bhoga Bhavati, Sarva Sokya Rupini, Kumari Kuchanamata, Kumari Pratacharini, Kumari Patasukini, Kumari Rupadarini, Kumari Puchakaprita, Kumari Pritita Priya, Kumari Sevaka Sangha, Kumari Sevaka Laka, Ananda Boira Bibala, Boira Bibata Boira Bi, Shmashan Boira Bikala, Boira Bi, Pura Boira Bi, Mahabhaira Patnicha, Paramananda Boira Bi, Surananda Boira Bicha, Umata Ananda Boira Bi, Mukyananda Boira Bicha, Tata Taruna Boira Bi, Gyana Ananda Boira Bicha, Amrita Ananda Boira Bi, Mahabhaya Kari Ibra, Tibra Veda Rasmini, Tripura Tamisani, Sundari Pura Sundari, Tripurishwari Panchadasi, Manchami Pura Pasini, Mahasatta Tashi Chaira, Shorashi Tripurishwari, Mahakusha Srupacha, Mahachapreshwari Tata, Namachapreshwari Chakra, Ishwari Tripuramalini, Rajachapreshwari Vira, Mahatri Pura Sundari, Sindhura Puru Ruchira, Srimad Tripura Sundari, Sarvatya Sundari Ratna, Ratna Vasrotari Yaka, Yabaya Bhakta Sindhura, Ratna Chandana Karini, Yabaya Bhakta Sindhura, Ratna Chandana Rupa Trik, Chamari Bhatsha Kukila, Nirmalyasya Nakesini, Bhatta Mopi Karatna Diya, Kiri Hitu Muku Dojwala, Ratna Kundana Sanyutas, Sura Ganda Madhurama, Kunjari Shvara Kumbhota, Mukta Viranjita Nasika, Mukta Vidruma Manitya, Harar Yastana Mandala, Surya Kadedu Kadashyas, Sparshas Makanta Bhushana, Bija Pura Sura Bija, Danda Pandira Dutama, Kamako Danda Kabhugna, Bru Yuka Akshika Bhartini, Matanga Dupa Bhakshonja, Vasaka Koka Tadekshana, Manojashya Chakuli Karna, Ansi Gati Vitamini, Padma Rangasta Dotusta, Oshka Chushka Prakashini, Nana Mani Puri Puras, Chudra Kamshana Kampana, Nagindra Danta Nirmana, Palayam Chatri Chitta Panika, Anguria Chatri Drangi, Vichitra Chudra Kandika, Padamara Kridana, Karmantira Kandini, Kapura Agura Usturi, 
คุกมักราบลีพิตาพิจิตรรัตพิตรีเขาพระชากาลทลสติตารัตนาบีจักรรัสรัตนาสิงหาสนาดิบาสินีจักทักบิดนักรีพรมอานันตรบินีสหสรดาตนันตัสฉันกำลังดาลบาร์ทินีบรามรูปะชีวะโอดานาสุกาบิลาสินีฮาร์วิชนุกรันชินรามพระหัตยาเกษตรบิดาอาทโยนีร์พระโยนีร์จักรโยนีร์รัตโยนีจาบารุปะปะกัตตาตรีบัตินีบัตตาริณีปะกัตติธาปะกัตตาระรูปินีปะกัตสาลินีลิงกาปิจาริณีลิงกาปริยาลิงกาปิบาสินีลิงกาสตาลินีลิงการูปินีลิงกาสันดรีลิงกาปิธีมะกัปิธีร์บัดดับกีติร์มะคาสุกาลิงนามาสดานันดาบัดนันดาสดาร์ตีบัดนามาสดานันดาลิงนามาสดาร์ตีลิงมาลาคันตบูชาบัดมาลาบิบูชนาบัดลิงกาปิตาปิตาบัดลิงนาปิตาปิตาบาดลิงกาชนะปิตาบาดลิงกาสุรุปินีบาดลิงกาสุรุปัจจาบาดลิงกาสุขาบดาสวายมุกุสมาปิตาสวายมุกุสมาจิตาสวายมุกุสมาพราณาสวายมุกุสมูติตาสวายมุกุสมาสนาตาสวายมุกุสปัตตาิตาสวายมุกุสปัตตาิตาสวายมุกุสปัตตาลินีสวายมุกุสปัตติลกาสวายมุกุสปัตชาติตาสวายมุกุสปัตติรตาสวายมุกุสมารตาสวายมุกุสปัญญาตาสวายมุกุสมารตาสวายมุกุสปรัชิตาสวายมุกุสมาปริยาสวายมุกุสมานันตาลาระสุมัตตมานาสาสวายมุกุสมานันตาลาเฮลิสนิตเดดินีสวายมุกุสมาบาดาสวายมุกุสมาตุลาสวายมุกุสปฏินายาสวายมุกุสปัสนีสวายมุกุสมัสนิตาสวายมุกุสโมสุขาสวายมุกุสปัจจานีสวายมุกุสปปาลิกาสวายมุกุสมัจญาณสวายมุกุสมัพพะสวายมุกุสมัจญาณสวายมุกุสปปโภคินีสวายมุกุสมานันดาสวายมุกุสปบาชินีสวายมุกุสมอตซาสวายมุกุสปบุษมินีสวายมุกุสมอตซังดาสวายมุกุสปรุปินีสวายมุกุสมอมาดาสวายมุกุสปสันตรีสวายมุกุสมาราพยาสวายมุกุสมอตภะบาสวายมุกุสมาจักรสวายมุกุสปบาลิตาสวายมุกุสจักรปราญาสวายมุโอทรีมาริกาสวายมุกัจจุรัตชิตรีสวายมุปัตตาลิกาสวายมุกุสมาปราญาสวายมุกุสจักรปริยาสวายมุปัมตคาบาราสวายมุนิตคาติกาสวายมุพระตัตสัสวาสวายมุพระตรุปินีสวายมุพระตัตสมิราสวายมุพระพชรีรินีสัตว์ขาวพระปิตาสัตว์ขาวพระปิตาสัตว์ขาวพระโภคพระสัตว์ขาวพระโภคพระคุณผู้ชมสัตว์ขาว
She who is under the control of devotion. She who is eternal. She who is the manifestation of the bliss of, the, of devotion. She who is the attitude of devotion. She who is the cause of the peace of devotion. And it's hard to have peace if you don't have devotion. She who is the repository of all beauty. She who is the repository of all good fortune. She who is the mother of all enjoyment. She who is the intrinsic nature of the feeling of all comfort. She who enjoys the worship of the ever pure one. She who continues to perform the performance of the vow of worship for the ever pure one. She who is the ever pure one. She who gives the pleasure of devotion. She who wears the form of the ever pure one. And we're talking about Kumari. She is ever pure. She is constantly in purity. She who loves the worship of the ever pure one. She who is the beloved of the beloved of the ever pure one. She who is united in service of the ever pure one. She who resides within those who serve the ever pure one. She who is the bliss beyond all fear. She who is the strength beyond all fear. She who is the youth beyond all fear. She who is in the cremation ground where all fear ends. She who is time beyond all fear. She who is completely beyond all fear. She is boy or happy without fear. She was the spouse of the Great One beyond all fear. She was the supreme bliss beyond all fear. She was divine bliss beyond all fear. And she who is bliss beyond all fear. She who is the bliss of liberation beyond all fear. She who is the energy that pulls beyond all fear. She who is the bliss of wisdom beyond all fear. She who is the nectar of immortality beyond all fear. She who is greatly fearful. She who is very swift. She who moves swiftly, she who takes a cross, she who is the resident of the three cities, she who is the supreme ruler of all, she who is the beautiful one, she who is completely beautiful, she who is the supreme ruler of the three cities, she who is the fifteen-lettered one. Remember as Kadividya, Ka'e-i-la-rim, the fifteen lettered one. She who is the fifth. And I'll take the fifth on that. <laughs> she who is the resident of the city. She who is the great seventeen. And again, and the seventeen is Ka-e-i-la-rim. She is all the mantras. Um. And she was the sixteen. She is all the forms of Sri Vidya. She who is the supreme ruler of the three cities, the gross body, the subtle body, and the causal body. She who is the intrinsic nature of the great goad. And she's the goad. She pushes us on, prods us on towards our goal. And she who is the supreme ruler of the great synergy, centers of energy, meaning the chakras, Every chakra is a center of en energy, and she is Maha Chakra Ishwari. She who is the supreme ruler of the nine centers of energy. She who is the supreme ruler of the centers of energy. She who is the gardener of the three cities. She who is the supreme ruler of the king of all centers of energy. And that's the Agya Chakra, where all the orders emanate. 
She who is the female hero. She who is the great beautiful one of the three cities. She who is completely delighted with the red spot of vermilion. And mine grew up a little today. She who is the respected, beautiful one of the three cities. She whose all whims are beautiful. She who is passion. And she who is clothed in a red garment. This rakta means both red and passion and blood. And it also means ovum. So in some instances, there is a double entendre implied here because she is she well here she rock the bustra so she has the rock the bustra she has the cloth and she is clothed in red garment she was young she wears vermilion or red sandal paste she whose youthful countenance is constantly adorned with red vermilion and red sandal paste she who is inconstant she who is spoken of as one who has pure, dark, wavy hair. She in whose crown the pearls and jewels are shining like lightning. She who disseminates a beautiful scent in where is wearing a necklace of radiantly shining jewels which are united together. She who wears an extremely beautiful nose ring, which is made from the supreme lord of all jewels and pearls. She who wears a necklace of exquisitely beautiful pearls and jewels in the region of her breast. She whose throat is shining by the ultimate touch of the sun and the moon. She whose 15 excellent teeth are completely shining with bij mantras. She's got a bij mantra inscribed on each tooth. That's why she's smiling. She whose eye in the middle of her forehead disciplines desire, just like Shiva burned love. Uh, it is comedy. She whose breasts give nourishment to existence. Remember her left breast. She nourishes devotees with devotion, her right with wisdom. She who is especially loves the red lotus flower. She who knows the entire path from the ear to the mind. <laughs> ah, it goes in one ear and then it goes in the mind and she knows the whole path and how to censor out all the stuff that you don't want in the mind. It starts with the ear. She was the mother of the swan's motion and we talked about the, the Panama Hunts, the great swan. She whose lotus-like body is the illuminator of the four Vedas. She who wears bracelets shining with various gems and jewels. And remember, she also has all the alphabets of Sanskrit on her bracelet. She wears all vibrations as an ornament. She whose fingers of her hands bear rings made of ivory and other gems. Almost. She who wears rings on various parts of her body. She who holds an unusually small bell. She who wears shiny silk cloth. She who enjoys the tinkling of cymbals to accompany devotional chanting. She who wears unguents of camphor, wood apple, and musk, and mixed with red paste. Uh, if you take some red sandal paste and off the trunk one, and you mix some, uh, mix some corpor, uh, some camphor, and wood apple is a, a, a what do you call it? Um, a guru. A guru. Uh, and then some musk, uh, and then you mix it into an unguent, and it becomes a paste, and you rub that all over her body. She was situated on earth covered with various jewels at the foot of the tree of all fulfillment. Kalpa Briksha, she's sitting under the Kalpa Briksha under the tree of all fulfillment wearing various jewels. She who sits upon a seat of jewels from the purity of the island of jewels. She who pierces the six centers of energy. Lam, she was the intrinsic nature of the supreme bliss. She 
too resides in the regions of the moon at the apex of the thousand petaled lotus. She who resides in the form of supreme desire in the anger of Shiva and in the various forms of pleasure. She who is served by Shiva, Vishnu, Brahma, Indra, and the leaders of planets. She who is the womb of the soul. She who is the womb of supreme divinity. She who is the womb of perceivable universe. She who does not take birth from any womb. She who is the form of wealth. She who resides within wealth. She who upholds wealth and is the wealth. She who is the capacity for the, su the support of wealth. She who is the intrinsic nature of the manifestation of wealth. She who reposes in wealth. She who is a progenitor of the subtle body. Now remember, linga has three meanings. It means a male organ, it means the subtle body, and it means the symbol. So here, we've chosen the meaning subtle body because she resides in the subtle body. She who is the beloved of the subtle body. She who resides within the subtle body. She who is situated in the subtle body. She who is the capacity of the subtle body. She who is the intrinsic nature of the subtle body. She who is the beautiful one in the subtle body. She who is greatly enamored of the songs of subtlety. She who derives great pleasure from the wealth of song. She who takes delight in the subtle name. She who is always inspired by the name which bears wealth. She who is always in bliss with the names which bear wealth. She who is always inspired by the names of subtlety. She at whose throat shines forth the garland of subtlety. She who shines forth with the garland of wealth. She who is the beloved of the subtle nectar of wealth. She who is the capacity of the subtle nectar of wealth to manifest. She who is the beloved of the offering of subtle wealth. She who is the intrinsic nature of the subtle wealth. She who is the essence of subtle wealth. And she who is the conveyance of the pleasure of subtle wealth. She who is the beloved of the flower which is born of itself, Swayambu. It's born of itself. It comes of its own accord. She who is the offering of the flower which is born of itself. She who is the life force of the flower which is born of itself. She who raises aloft the flower which is born of itself. She who is bathed by the flower which is born of itself. She who is the offering to the ancestors of the flower which is born of itself. She who is the refuge of the flower which is born of itself. She who upholds or supports the flower which is born of itself. She who wears a tilak made of the flower which is born of itself. She who offers the flower which is born of itself. She who is absorbed in the essence of the flower which is born of itself. She who is beyond the worlds of the flower which is born of itself. She who offers in sacrifice to her own self the flower which is born of itself. She who is the capacity of the soul to manifest the flower which is born of itself. She who is the expression of the flower which is born by itself. She who is the beloved of the flower which is born by itself. She whose mind is intoxicated with desire for the flower which is born by itself. She whose friendly body experiences waves of bliss from the flower which is born by itself. She who supports the flower which is born by itself. She who is the family of the flower which is born by itself. She who resides in the flower which is born by itself. She who sits on the flower which is born by itself. She who is the friend of the flower which is born by itself. 
She used the supreme pleasure of the flower which is born by itself. The flower which is born by itself. Aristotle called it the first mover which itself is unmoved. The flower which is born by itself. The first mover unmoved. The primary cause. She who is the cause of the flower which is born by itself. She who is the protector of the flower which is born by itself. She who is the student or meditator on the flower which is born by itself. She who is the radiance of the flower which is born by itself. She who is the wisdom of the flower which is born by itself. She who is the enjoyer of the flower which is born by itself. She who is the bliss of the flower which is born by itself. She who causes the rain of the flower which is born by itself. She who is the enthusiasm of the flower which is born by itself. She who is the flower of the flower which is born by itself. She who is always with the flower which is, which is born by itself. She who is the intrinsic nature of the flower which is born by itself. She who is the intoxication of the flower which is born by itself. She who is the beauty of the flower which is born by itself. She who is delighted by the flower which is born by itself. She who gives birth to the flower which is born by itself. She who distinguishes the flower which is born by itself. She who expresses the flower which is born by itself. She was the supreme wisdom of worship of that which is born by itself. She was the mother of the supreme wisdom of sacrificial worship of that which is born by itself. She who protects the bestower of that which is born by itself. She who intuitively understands the attitude of devotion of that which is born by itself. She who is the wisdom of the flower which is born by itself. She who is the beloved of the worship of that which is born by itself. She who supports the cause of worship of that which is born by itself. She who is the cause of the end of that which is born by itself. It dissolves into her. It has come from her. She is the, the cause, the primary cause, and she is the primary recipient at the end of dissolution. Only she will remain. She who is the bestower of all that is which is born that by itself. She who is the bestower of all that which is born that by itself. She who is the intrinsic nature of the bestower of that which is born by itself. She who is the remembrance of the bestower of that which is born by itself. She who is the half body of that which is born by itself. And the other half is he. Ardhanarishwa. She who is the beloved who gives birth to all time. She who has the capacity of the expression of the soul which gives birth to all time. She who is the attitude of all time. She who gives birth to time. She who is the beloved of all the flowers in the receptacle. She who always moves with the flowers of light. She who is the beloved of the light of the receptacle. And receptacle could also, it's a kund, it's a container. It's any kind of receptacle or container, uh, like a haven kund. Like a body is a receptacle. It's a container, like the pot was a container. Any definition that contains the beloved of the light in the receptacle. She who has the capacity of the soul to express the light in the receptacle. Take this container and allow the soul to express the light in that container. She was the supporter of purity. Now, shukra, shukra can mean semen, the seeds of life. And shukra means clarity, it means purity, it means pure white. So she was the supporter of purity. 
She who is the form of purity. She who resides in the ocean of purity. She who has indestructible purity. She who is the enjoyer of purity. She who is delighted by worship with purity. She who rests in passion. Rakta means red. Rakta means passion. Rakta means blood. And she who rests in passion. She doesn't really rest in blood. That wouldn't be appropriate. Uh, she doesn't really rest in, uh, um, in red. Uh, in fact, she's always in the black. She's never in the red. But she does rest in passion, especially if you love her passionately. She who is the enjoyer of passion. She who is constantly delighted by worship with passion. She who is worshipped with passion. She who is offered sacrificial offerings with passion. She who is situated in passion. She who takes refuge in passion. She who is the description of passion. She who has the body of passion. She who is the daughter born from worship with passion. Please don't worship her without passion. Worship is not to be performed dispassionately. Worship is to be full on, passionately, as, as loving as you can be, become. She who is the dignity of passion, she who is the touch of passion, she who is the goddess, and she who is beautiful passion, she who knows passion, she who is worthy of passion, she who celebrates it as the passion of the god of love. She who is great passion. She who exists in passion. She who gives the creation of passion. She who bathes in passion. She who is soaked in passion. She who becomes extremely passionate with selfless service of passion. She who manifests the bliss of passion. She who always gives the bliss of passion. She who rests within passion. She who gives full, complete, and perfect passion. She who is served by passion. She who is beautiful. She who is worshipped in all with passion. She who destroys the criticism of passion. She who is the soul's capacity for the expression of passion. She who is a form of passion. She who is the cause of the attraction of passion. She who is the enthusiasm of passion. And she who rides upon passion. She who drinks with passion. She who is the mother of the bliss of the female scene of life. Uh, of life. Shunta is a number, a name, another name for oboe. It could also mean blood. It, uh, it's the female seed of life. She who is the intrinsic nature of attachment to the family. She who is the goddess who goes inside sadhus. Please, Ma, come inside me. Passionately. She who is pure nourishment. She who is the destroyer of all sin and confusion. She who is the giver of delight to all sadhus. She who destroys the impurity of all sadhus. She who is situated in the heart of all sadhus. She who is the cause of the bliss of all sadhus. She who is the mother of the bliss of all sadhus. She who is the cause of the love of sadhus. She who is the gives the wealth of delight and extreme bliss to sadhus. She who is worshipped by purity. She who is satisfied with sacrificial offerings of purity. She who takes refuge in purity. She who is the image of purity. She who is the embodiment of purity. She who is the daughter of worship with purity. She who is situated in purity. She who is supreme purity. She who is the complete touch of purity. She who is the beauty of purity. She who is bathed in purity. She who is the manifestation of purity. She who is the supreme purity served by the pure. She who is the great purity. She who is pure existence. She who is the giver of the reign of purity. She who is the 
And how does chanting the Chandi Abhini Sadhana affect the centers of energy? Thank you. None of our, specifically, we're talking about the chakras within the body, and as we chant, uh, we're creating a vibration that goes right through, permeating all the chakras, all the centers of energy, and filling them with the vibration of the chant that we're chanting. So as we're chanting, we're doing the pranayama, we're conceiving the meaning, and we're bringing up this energy, it's just pouring out from our chakras, and piercing permeating each of the centers of energy so we enliven that energy. We get control over that energy. When we sit for meditation, uh, we feel greater uh, awareness of the energy in those centers. Question from Usha from Canada. Namaste Usha Ma. Samaji, every chakra is supposed to have a different goddess. Which one is Kali? Could you please speak about this a little? Thank you. Uh, I can speak about it very little. <laughs> because, it, it, of course, there's only one goddess. And in this text, the goddess is Kali. Now, certainly, there's a different, uh, a, there, there are different deities which reside in each of the chakras, and their shaktis are present there as well. In the Muladhara is Indra and Indrani. Uh, in the Shwadishtana is uh, a Buruna and a Buruni. In the Monipur, you'll find Agni and Swaha. In the Anahat, you'll find Vayu uh, 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 and, uh, uh, what's his wife? Vayu uh, uh, and, I don't remember her name. Sorry, I'll bring it tomorrow. In, in the uh, 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 in Vishuddh Chakra, you, you find Rudra and Rudrani. In the Agra Chakra, you find Shiva and Shakti or Kali as you like. Swamiji, Amasha is asking, can Swamiji please repeat what is wood apple? Wood apple is Oguru. Uh, it, that's the name of it. You'll find it at the Indian store or any Punja store. Swamiji, Bendy is asking about name 836. Yes, please. Uh, can you, Namaste Swamiji, can you explain what the songs of Sakriti are? No. <laughs> Not fair. The songs of subtlety are so subtle that you can't explain it, Wendy. That's why you can only feel it. You can feel the music is going on, you can hear it inside, but you can't explain it, you can't verbalize it because it's only in the, it's inside. If it were gross, I could talk about it, I could even sing it for you. But it's the songs of subtlety, the music you hear inside. Swamiji, a question from Shankari Kali. Namaste Shankari Kali. Um, can uh, Swamiji explain the Tuesday of the new moon? And Bomavashya. Uh, it, it's uh, Amavashya that falls on a Tuesday. Uh, and you'll find it comes, uh, sometimes it comes once every two years and sometimes it comes once every three years. Uh, so you, you'll have to pay attention to your uh, almanac and see when the, the Amavashya falls on Tuesday. Question from Masha. So then we could also say that Bhu Devi is the primary cause of creation? Certainly we can. Uh, but that's another text. Uh, or should we say, or can we say that Bhu Devi is the name of the goddess when she's acting as the primary cause? No, we could also say that Devi is the manifestation of the primary cause. Because the primary cause is not the Dharitima, it's not the earth, it's not manifested, it's before manifestation. So Devi is the name that we give to the earth when she has manifested in earth, as earth. Not before. But we could call her the primary cause, become Ekam Shabdipra, Bahuta Babanti. There is one supreme divinity which has many, many names. Swamiji, um, a question from Wendy. Main 956 refers to attachment to the family. Um, yet, Sri Ramakrishna says that we even have to give up attachment to our family. 
Can you please explain? Thank you. Yes, if you de change the definition of the family, then you don't want to give up that attachment. She is the intrinsic nature of the attachment to the family. Now, who is your family? Is it your nuclear family, just uh, Sam and, and uh, the, the rest of us that come along? Or your extended family, which includes uh, the man on the moon and the, the people on Mars? When you define your family, then she is the intrinsic nature of that family, of that love, of that attachment. Question from Nanda and Nilima Agarwal from New Delhi. Namaste Nilima, Namaste Nanda. Namaste Swamiji, why is our devotion so mediocre? How can we make it into a passionate one? Thank you. We have to cultivate passion. Nilima, we, compassion is a, a privilege. And we want to cultivate to love passionately. Not, not with uh, vairagya, not with dispassion. We want to love passionately. When I come to my guru, I want to learn passionately. And when I come to God, I want to pray passionately. When I focus on meditation, I want to focus with intensity and with, with passion. This is something we cultivate. It's an attitude of gratitude. What a privilege it is to be in this association. And now, can I respond passionately? This is something we will practice and will cultivate. And every time we think we're getting lethargic, then remind ourselves what a privilege it is to have this life and to have this association, to have this knowledge available to us whereby we can extricate ourselves from mediocrity and love passionately. I think job is the only way that we can change our uh, previous conditioning. If we continually recite for ourselves and for others, what a privilege it is to be doing what I'm doing and that's why I'm doing it passionately. Because I want to be doing it. Question from Nanda. I remember reading about moving our energies to higher chakras and living from there. That is being more heart chakra oriented instead of living from lower energy centers. Please let me know if this is something that we do as part of our sadhana. Thank you. It, it is the sadhana, Nandama. What we are doing is moving our energy. First of all, we have to become familiar with what that energy is. We have to get control of the energy so that we know where, what it feels like, what it looks like, what it, what it tastes like. And then once we can recognize that energy, we want to get to be able to move it where we want it. And then every time we feel that we are about to respond from a place where it's not appropriate, we want to begin stop ourselves and say, hey, stop. Wait a moment, <laughs> don't make matters worse. Make, make, think about what you're going to say, Swami. <laughs> don't respond immediately. <laughs> Give the appropriate response. And that's just what you're talking about, Nanda. Question from Michael Colorado. Namaste, Michael. Namaste, Karen. Namaste, Samji. Could the songs of subtlety be emotions? like appreciation, love, clarity of purpose, the feeling of invincibility, things like that? Absolutely. They're beautiful songs. All those songs that you're listening to are inside that you don't really have a word for to express or to sing them out loud. Those are the songs. Thank you, Michael, for that clarification. Follow-up question from Nanda. Swamiji, how do we recognize that energy? Every part of the sadhana that we are learning is directed towards uh, cultivating the capacity to recognize that energy. We learn how to 
take the energy out of the deity and put it on a flower and put it in our heart. We learn how to take the energy out of the heart and put it on a flower and put it in the pot. We learn how to take it out, the energy out of the pot and put it on a flower and put it in our heart. We learn how to take the energy out of our heart and put it on a flower and put it in the fire. We learn how to recognize the energy. Everything we're doing in the puja, in the chandipat, in the homa, all of Siddhant Achara is directed towards teaching us how to recognize that energy and thereafter how to get control over that energy and thereafter how to use that energy for its optimal purpose. Question from Devi from Atlanta. Namaste Devi Ma. Swamiji on page 106. When we talk about Brahma, Vasya, and Nisha, Bhago, it yeah. talks about the five principles. What are the five principles we offer and how do we offer them? We're going to get to that in the next uh, chapter. Uh, actually, they are the five tattvas. Uh, they are part of the tantric offering. Uh, we call them the five M's. They are much mudra, mams, moitun, and madera. And we'll go into that translation tomorrow in our next session. Thank you. Question from Wendy. Um, Swamiji, should we recite or chant pujas loudly or does the volume not matter? Can we do puja silently? You can do puja silently, but please stay there with the puja. Don't let your mind go off and roam. Uh, if I'm calling to someone who's far away, then I want to call loudly so they can hear me. Hey, Ma, can you hear me? Please come. And if you can, when she comes and she's very close, I can just look into her eyes and she'll know exactly what I want to say. She'll know what my heart is saying just with a glance. So, if you feel distant from her, sing loudly and tell the mind to shut up. While the mind is chattering, it's so difficult to do silent puja. So you want to do first loudly and call her into your presence and then get softer and softer and softer until you sit in meditation and still the mantra is gone. Om Sam Sarasvati Namaha Namaste